Phyllis and Steve from Mississippi ask, we're building a new house on 600 acres with a small lake. We plan on using solar for power and rain catchment for water. What are your thoughts on geothermal HVAC? We'd surely love any advice you have for the overall project. So first off, let me give you guys, Phyllis and Steve, uh, some generic uh, geothermal advice for you that I think will be helpful for anybody in the listening audience. Geothermal, very old technology. The idea being you don't have an outside compressor that's moving the freon to the outside and exchanging the heat with the outside air. Instead, you have this loop that's drilled into the ground that basically moves that refrigerant through the ground. And the ground in theory is, you know, a constant, let's say 45 degrees, 50 degrees. And so you're moving heat between the ground and your loop. So a lot of benefits of geothermal. If you, if you have this kind of heat sink of a really good temperature, uh, you're going to be able to move that heat. You also have the beauty of no compressor outside. Uh, and some really high coefficients of performance. In other words, uh, if you think of like sear value for uh, for outside units, really, really high numbers basically is what I'm talking about here. However, there are some downsides. And you telling me you're in Mississippi makes me immediately concerned that you are not in typical geothermal country. If you're in Minnesota, you probably could um, pick up a, uh, a Google search and go, oh, Jim's uh, drilling company who does geothermal and Jim's heating and cooling that installs these systems every day, no problem. We call them and we'll install this. But if you're in Mississippi, if you're in Texas, really just about anywhere in the South, the people who have installed those are really one off. And there's nobody who does it day in, day out. There's probably some people that have done it, 